Now come round any old time, make yourself at home. Put your feet on the mantel shelf, well open the cupboard and help yourself. Now I don't care if your friends have left you all alone. Rich or poor, now knock at the door and make yourself at home. You must be joking. I can't speak. <laughs> so I load the mic very close. <laughs> Have you seen anything of the festival today? Yeah, I was on one of the floats. Oh, the you was on one of the floats. Some hospital floats. And you enjoyed yourself? Yes, yeah, can't you? <laughs> yeah, you've been singing too yeah. much. How about you, sir? It's all right, lovely. Want more of them? More of them? And more yeah. beer. Yeah. <laughs> More beer. Yeah. You sound like you've had too much. <laughs> I didn't get enough, that's why I'm like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, it sounds smashing. The people that's passed here today, it's really brought the place to life. And you feel that this is a thing you'd like to see every year? Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's brought the old atmosphere back as it used to be. <laughs> There's always been a good place and it could be made back the same way as it would be when it first started. What do you mean by that? Well, it's, it's just the people. I mean, they all moan and groan. They want this, they want that, they want the other. Just try and get something going. You get half the people to come, the other half don't want to know. I mean, what, what's the good? If they want these things, then they've got to come to them. If you had better clubs for the teenagers, it would be a nice thing. And who do you think they should be run by? Oh, by, the, by, by the council, by council by really. What do you think of this festival? I very think it's good, very good. Yeah. I've, yeah, yeah, it's very good. It's, um, it's doing a good job. Do you know who started it out? No, I don't. Beautiful. You Lovely. Going? Yeah, we've been this afternoon. We're going again tonight. We're going to get yeah. the children. What do you think might happen after having this festival? Do you think anything is, will come out during the year? I don't think so. And mm. do you miss the good old... Well, well are they good old days, or is it just that you miss the community well, spirit? We miss the community yeah. more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. I think the television got a lot to do, don't you? It keeps everybody in. Yeah. Well, years ago, when everybody was poor, everybody was out, you know what I mean? Well, you didn't have no telly, did oh, you? No. Well, didn't have no wireless, no wireless. Well, <laughs> <laughs> had no supper. Well, that's true as well. <laughs>
this evening we've got three films to see, three films about life here in Poplar, and between those three films, we're going to have a break where we can talk and discuss. There's some orange for the kids and yourselves at the back of the church, and we can generally sort of have a get together and talk about things. <laughs> Yes, I am. Yeah. Well, I've got chances. Let's uh... Ease off a bit, ease off. Clergy, ease off. Oh, I just. Ease off. Pow! <laughs> Next year, it wouldn't be so hard. I mean, we've been working on this festival for five, six months. Mm. It's been very, very hard work. But next year, it wouldn't be so hard. No, because more people because, would offer Because you get people help. forward. And I think when it comes to the question of leadership, when people talk about leadership, I think if you get people, as it's true with these camera people, you can take a camera and you can interview people. Yeah. They showed you how to do it, so surely we've got some idea of how to lead to a certain extent, or organise, not to lead. And we could give that information to people who come forward. Yeah, we're going to carry on from now. Like the festival's finished now, so we're mm. going to have another one next year. Uh, what do you propose to do in between to keep this community interested? Yeah. What have we got in mind? Why should he propose to do? Well, the idea is he has started it, and this you're supposed to no, build your own I'm community up. No, but I'm one yeah, with but him. I mean. I mean we're all open to suggestions. If he's got any suggestion that uh, we think is, is a, a very good idea, which our main object really is, what we want here is a good social club. I think it'll be Club's sad if, uh, if all the sort of community interest that's been reawakened in the area is, um, is simply directed and getting a community centre. Mm -hmm. Because that is going to take a long, long time, probably many years even. I'm not saying it's wrong. I think we do need one here. But in the meantime, we've got to hold people and we've got to make sure that the well, concern the doesn't say, die. How are we going to do it? Well, I mean, look at this evening. You see, who would have thought that, that we could have met in a church like this? Who would have thought this was a possibility of meeting in here? A month ago. A month ago, ago, it wouldn't have been dreamt of being possible. I believe, you know, people have tried in the past to do something successful, and they've failed. This time, we've been successful. And I think that this is a time, the time now is ripe, where we can cash in on this, not a very nice term to use, probably, but we can do because we can show people that they're capable of doing something for themselves. Now, this was done, this was a community festival, so therefore, we had no officials from the borough, no officials from anywhere telling us or showing us what to do. We've done it ourselves. And it shows people that they can do it, and they've got a terrific amount of power. Richard, wait for me now. Come on. Up. 
I think by being involved, I don't say I do anything big, but I can do something about what I'm not agreeing with. You know, like I'm on the managers and I don't quite agree with all the education system. So to me, be involved with it and then I can do something, even if it's something that it takes a lot of time before you do make any change, but at least you're doing something. You're not just sitting back and moaning about it. I'm lucky I've got the type of husband that I can say to him, oh, well, I'm going so-and-so, and that's it. I mean, Wednesday night, I went over here at half past six and didn't see him till about 11. But there's not many husbands that you could really do no, this with. I didn't bother. I was, uh, you know, I'd sooner not have it. I'd wait to uh, fish for night. Because I only have fish at work, and it's not as uh, nice as I like. So I prefer to wait. Have you found the key? Have you found the key? Well, where was it? Well, go and ask the boys if they've found it. Terry, go and ask the boys if they've found it. Quickly, go and ask them. Well, go and ask and look properly. didn't have the opportunity when the children were younger to go out together. And we had need to go out and have some leisure activity. Now I go a club Thursday night. It's club and managers meetings. We both do share these activities. But I'm shouting up. Jane scratched it as... 
I said, look at that. Now I've got a big crease in my bed. I said, look what she's done. You have to ask Mummy for some more chips in a minute. Rose? Rose, come help with these, please. Rose? Rosie, would you come help with these, please? They're very hot. We're not really leaders, Alice and I. We involve ourselves in lots of things. We probably think lots of things are wrong. But we're not the ones to jump up on a soapbox and say they're wrong. There's quite a number of people, perhaps Billy Pine is one of them, that will say, well, certain things need to be done. This is the way it should be done. And they'll listen to you and respect your opinion that you want it done a different way, but they'll go ahead and do it anyway. And this is what leadership is, really. But there again, even political parties depend greatly, more than most people realise, on helpers. Those that are ready to stand and cheer and push along with the leader. And let's face it, if you haven't got the helpers, you haven't got the leaders. Oh, sorry. Check up. Come on, just don't want to go to bed or anything like that. But it seemed it's better when either of us are away. Like when I was at Letchford, you said that, baby. Well, I would do settle that. I've gone away for a couple of weeks. No, 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 I don't want that. I just want to put the kids to bed. <laughs> no, but when you was in hospital, I mean, that was a cold night. Um, did they go to bed by themselves? No, they didn't go to bed by themselves, but they went but to sleep quick. When you was away, they went to bed by themselves. Oh, well, got to, you know, I'd just all down to a fine hour. Well, you put them to bed tonight. Yeah, but then you come in during the time and distract them. Yeah, well, I'll come home sometime after being about. No, I'm just saying that when they, uh, when you was away, I mean, like, tonight when I took them to bed, there's Richard, he plays up for, what, a quarter of an hour, and then I go off to sleep, and he finally goes off to sleep. Yeah, but do you think but when you was away, you j they just used to go off to sleep. Yeah, but do you think we're strict enough? Yeah. Depends what you mean, isn't it? It ain't that bad for getting asleep. Well, except that me goes to sleep, isn't it? You know, every night. I'll remember that next time, won't you? So when you come down and they won't go to sleep, they're not that bad. Well, they're not bad there, really. It's just that when you go up there and go to sleep, you get up and you feel lousy. Let's be fair, we do run around after them. Well, you only do what you think is right. And perhaps we do it for our own benefit, I don't know. But sometimes they enjoy things simply because it, it's a bit different. Like Terry, when he went to queue, he enjoyed it because he went out with other kids and he went on a train. And yet when we take them out, well, sometimes I think whether it's worth it or not. You know, because they always create... Well, this is what I'm saying. Well, you can only do what you think's best. I mean, let's play, uh, quite honestly, I mean, they're, they're, they're having a different sort of childhood from what I had. In, in some cases, I think they're missing out. I think one of the big failings of life is that everybody has been taught to measure success and way of life by money. Possibly a breakdown in society through too much money, may fetch about people going more for values of what they're getting. This sharing might come about much quicker than people think because money's rapidly becoming worthless.
you know, you imagine vast sort of miles and miles of sand, and when you get there, there's a sort of piddling little beach. Did I already tell you? Oh, yes. have to attract people to want to come to that group as their GP service, you know, yeah. primary care unit. I believe it would, in fact, because I think once people saw that, that here was something that really was concerned and caring about what was going on medically. But that's the only way that, that, that I can see. You're going to get the sort of GPs who are going to give each, each other enough support to be able to run it. Because, you know, I, I hate that they're running down the GPs that we've got now, but it does seem to me that one of the basic weaknesses is that being all on their own, they've got no support for each other. Mm. And, and I get the impression that here are people who are sort of saying to themselves, in effect, we would like to give a, a really good service, mm. but because we can't give a really good service, mm. um, we're just giving what we can get by with, you know? Mm. If you've got the sisters involved in this, you you'd give the, the, the centre a head start over anybody well, else. Well, that's what I feel. I mean, yeah. you'd have something concrete to offer. Is there any way in which one could, could get this across to some of the people involved in the Poplar Hospital campaign? It's a bit difficult at this stage because um, you've got so many sort of different viewpoints on that. Yeah. And I mean, quite apart from the, the particular issue of the hospital, what they're looking for simply doesn't fit in with the rest of the... the, the Yes. the social service community med medical thing as it's developing anyway. Being a member of a team it means that yeah, we each of us are able to get more involved in particular spheres of work that we could do if we simply had the machinery of parish life to keep ticking over. But we're all basically parish priests. We're not so divorced from ordinary everyday parish affairs that we're just a hospital man or a school man. Different people see me in different ways. If I go into a home that I don't know, people don't know me, people do react to me in a particular way as the vicar. But there's many, many other homes that I do know personally and I'm as close to them as I am to anybody in my life and I think they would say the same. Arthritis. Arthritis. Yeah. It's a nasty thing. It gets right into your head. Yes. Mm. My sister's going to try and get me in a home. Yeah, you going to go? She's trying to get me near Wickford that way. Yeah. Where they live. Wickford. Mm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
in the hurly-burly city life, I do think, I think that's part of my job, is to think and reflect on what's going on and to possibly interpret my theological thinking into living, not only for myself, but for those among whom I live. All right, I'll tell them. Fine, I'll tell them. That's what they owe you. Look, right. have a look at this. I wrote, walk. I wrote, um, this is our parish magazine, you know, mm -hmm. and I wrote um, an article about nursing in the, front, in the, in the editorial, see what you think. Maybe when I come on the, whenever it is, the 20, 26, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, half a dozen girls, we might arrange for them to go and have an evening meal. Yes, remembering on the 28th, they Visual. finish their mm. introductory course as such. Mm. Once they're on the wards, mm. they won't be off every evening. too long and, and still for too many people, they do see the church and the Christian faith being divorced from everyday life, from things that affect all of us. It's very exciting being able to link the two together, both to stretch Christian people's imagination to embrace things bigger than the four walls of the church and also to sometimes even shock people outside the church in showing that you are interested genuinely interested and want to be involved in everyday things.
what I can remember about um, my family. It was good, it was enjoyable. We lived in an house, a four-bedroomed house with two families. That was the common thing in those days, two up and two down. The school was part of the church. It was called St. Saviour's. It was Anglo-Catholic, rather a high sort of place. My father was a good provider. He was always at work, even during the hard times. He was a calm and he used to drive a pair of horses, you know. And they used to pull the meat from the docks to the meat market. And they worked very hard, he did, and all. You always went out as a family. You never went out on your own. The musical was probably a Saturday or a Friday night entertainment where all the family went. When I got home last Saturday night, my wife prepared a treat. Well, she did have lots of fancy food and foreign grub to eat. There were snails on toast and omelettes too, like I society. But I shook my head and I softly said, take that away from me. All together now, I want sure it's and we with a little bit of pickle and a bottle of beer and a lovely grub and a room of cheer Cause you can keep your caviar and anything else you please in I want a big plate of chips and cake, they're really great Now I can't wait, put them on an offer upon the plate They're lovely for tea There wasn't any uh, very places where you could be intimate in Poplar Randall's Market was one of them Although it was made to, for a marketplace, it never was. It was always a place to meet the girls. Limehouse Cup was holds a lot of memories for me. The water used to come out probably from the boilers, the hot boilers, to take soap down there because we never had no baths in our house, not hot baths. Only the trouble is that the only people who used to be able to have a bath was the people who could swim because it was about 30 feet deep where the water was coming out of the wall. Victoria Park was my favourite. I went swimming there because it was free and it was clean. I used to swim in the Thames from Limehouse Pier. It was clean then, the Thames. Petticoat Lane never done nothing for me. Nor did Brick Lane because uh, People never went there to talk, they only went there to think that they were going to buy a bargain. I never said that about Chris Street Market. Chris Street Market was a place you went to shop anyway and meet people who you know. Most of the people who lived in the East End used to go hot picking, that was the only holiday we got. I used to go to approximately six weeks, all in Kent, round about Kent, anywhere. That was a fantastic place to go to. As kids, that was just out of this world. I used to live in, like, corrugated huts about 20 foot by 20 foot. The women, when they went down, the first job was to decorate. Pigs would live in them today, I don't think. And outside, there was the big fire where everything was cooked on. Little ovens at the side, you know, where they could cook, but mostly the tea was cooked on this big fire. It was communal living at its best. I moved out of Poplar in 1950 because I couldn't find a, a house to live in. They offered me a flat and I didn't want to live in a flat. I didn't want to bring my kids up in a flat. So I moved out to Essex, to South Ockenden, and I kept me living with a Ford Motor Company. Hello, Dagnall. Hello, Charlie Barron last night. Oh, see Charlie Barron, Can you get hold of the other end of that? Huh? 
If I don't take part in any community life here, except for going to the pub or the club or somewhere like that, Esther does, my wife, because she's a school cook. And it's only somewhere to live as far as I'm concerned. Must be glass now. Mm. Oh, no. I used to suffer with that a lot in the army pool press. Worst to get some nips. Folks dug him out. He has a pretty change when he comes in. What are you doing? What did you put a phone for him? How like that? Oh, I can't stay in! One time she's trying to take the poo out, the waves out, now she's trying to put it back again. You wake your mind up, Joe. What are you going to do? She's been years trying to strain it. Yeah, she's giving up, is she? She can't beat him, Joe. There's a key's in the car, Jane. Jane? Where are you going? They're out. They're out. Follow cooker, you know, on the leech. Follow cooker. Get your brown towel. Oh. <laughs> if you took falls away from this area, there'd be a lot of unhappy people, unfortunately. But there would be. Caravans and televisions all take money, and all people are interested in is making money to buy all these things. You've got to be able to live. This is the way the rest of the people live. So basically, I suppose, you've got to live that way. And they've got us all in a groove, all going the same way. This used to be called Sandy Lane. Nobody seems to want this job of representative or shop steward, I suppose. It goes against the grain. Everybody's not able probably to talk to the manager or doesn't want to talk to the manager or hasn't got the confidence to talk to the manager. I think working people don't think deeply because after time, if they thought a lot deeper, they wouldn't do probably what they're doing. I've always spent a lot more of my time in London than what I have at South Hockingham. It's just one of those things that's grown up over the years. I go and see my mother and father, but invariably I finish up in the headquarters in Billy's house. We went in one pub, and they've had a piano, didn't they? No, had an no, organ. Organ, yeah. And uh, he said, can I play the organ? So they said, certainly, but we'll have to switch the Uber on first, because yeah. you can blow it. <laughs> 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 That's his house. And he played, he played Best This House, and a couple of farm workers stood up and sang it. Do yeah, you remember, Joe? Right, yeah, we, we could have shut with tears in our eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't see us getting an house anyway, because at that time, they weren't building any houses in Poplar. It's 22 years, 23 years ago now. Uh, and I think I'd still have to stop where I am, yeah, I think because I'm, you know, what's that about an old dog or an old dog, don't change his spots or something, you know? Say, say you fell at your grounds, Joe, say you have been offered an house. Who would have stopped in for then? <laughs> Thank you. 
When I was a boy, people used to take any opportunity to have a party. I remember the street parties for the coronation and the jubilee. There was a piano in the street and people used to sing and dance. It was Lex, who was a Methodist minister and the mayor of Popper in 1919 who started the street parties to celebrate the end of the war. There used to be possessions as well, all to do with the church. The biggest ones used to come from the Catholic Church and along the route there used to be shrines and altars. In the evening, the priest used to come back followed by a band and bless the altars. For most people, the feeling of solidarity came from the unions. In building up the unions, they built up the community. The unions stood for the common good. Instead of being out for yourself, they stood for equality, justice and loyalty. Before 1889, there were only the craft unions, like the Leitermen and Waltermen, which went back to the guilds. The labourers, the majority of men, weren't organised. They weren't in any union at all. They were casuals who stood on the stones and waited for a job. <laughs> ben Tillett, who was a union organiser, used to speak at dock gate meetings up and down the river. He believed, even when it seemed hopeless, that the whole of the working class had to struggle for its freedom. And in 1889, there was a great strike for the Dockers Tanner, which was really against conditions, against the casual system. They closed all the docks and had daily marches to the city, and they even organised their own relief. After five weeks, they won. The docks... Wolfside and General Labourers Union was formed with about 30,000 men. The lesson was you could win, but only win when you all stuck together. A bigger way, quite get it on here. Yeah. Yeah. Little bigger posts. They're very nice. Though, they, they, are. they are. They yeah, are. Yeah. It's very good. As I say, there. If we can get this one out, so I've thought like before, yeah. there will be more information and, and the time. Yeah. Yeah. On yes, that one. This is more practical. Isn't yeah. It, really? And these are some of the items that we've got on the program. The old time musical, the children's yeah. athletics, the boys' football, yeah. tug of war, the pram race, sideshow, stalls. Mm. Clowns you can put also, yeah. as you did last yeah, year, right, yeah, or children's right. entertainers. Take a little bit of a note. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that one at the bottom there, Sid, that's the most important piece on it. Because as far as I can see, the H Division police teams mm -hmm. has uh, been scrubbed. Bit of politics, I think. But, uh, It'd be nice to have them in, though, because you know, they have the rope, and also, because they're, they're knowledgeable about it, you know, because they've got, they've got umpires and so on, don't they, you know. And we haven't got a clue how to run tug of war. So we I think this was the trouble. I think last yeah. year they got a bounty because it was more of a giggle than a yeah. pure sporting yeah. event, you yeah. know. 
and like a lot of sportsmen, they're um, a bit serious about their sport, you know. Mm. Well, they were they were Metropolitan Police champions, weren't they, that time? Yeah. So yeah. They, just come know, they don't like to lose any no, form at all, no, yeah. even in, sp in like a, f a yeah. festival. You know. Yeah. It's a shame, though, because uh, it, it, we should have explained it to them, really, that it wasn't serious, you know. It's only, it's only for laughs, it's only for giggles, isn't it, you know? Yeah. Oh, never mind. Perhaps we'll have your autos this year. Okay, Pat. Yeah, the first one is that George Denton said, would you write to him informing him yeah. that you wish him to apply for the license for yeah. the 11th of June? Yeah. And the second one is that uh, the judo team would like to know what type of schedule you're setting up. Who knows the length of a tug of war pitch? See, we're a little bit in the dark about tug of war, <laughs> about the pitches and how, you know. Uh, what's the distance between the marks? Who knows? Anybody? We want ropes anyway. We must. What do you mean, special rope? We always see like a yeah, special rope, rope and a. I don't know. Yeah, I believe they are. If we can, you, if you can sort of get more involved with us over yeah. this way, it might be to your advantage, you know what I mean? Well, this is it, what we were saying. If we can't get no response from our tenants, yeah. We'd rather join something else. In turn, if, if the old age pensioners could have, say, a party Christmas from your estate, say it was about 40 or 50, there's no more, is there? No. 40 or 50, you could be accommodated here. And if the tenants or your association give them the party, you know what I mean? I think this would be a good thing and all. Coming from the festivals, I would like to see members of our committee, for example, taking more of an active part and an interest in their schools, for example, and sit on the schools as governors. I'd like to see them involved in local hospitals, sitting on the board of governors, if you like, with whatever management committees they have, sitting on them and, taking, and having the say. I would like to see them get on these so-called professional bodies. In 1920, there was a slump in the country. In Poplar, thousands were out of work. At that time, poor relief was seen by many as charity. George Lansbury, a Poplar councillor, said that families were entitled to relief as a right, not as charity. He always said there should be no poor law at all, that it was the capitalist system that was the root cause of unemployment, but in the meantime, he made sure that the poor got decent relief. <laughs> the administration of relief was a responsibility of the Poplar Board of Guardians. In 1892, Lansbury had been elected to the board along with Will Crooks and three other Labour men and they turned the board upside down, although they were only in a minority. Their idea was to keep the family together rather than force them into the workhouse. Because of this, government inquiries accused them of extravagance, but they stuck to their principles. <laughs> The feeling for Lansbury went very deep because he made people believe in themselves and in each other and that they had the ability to change things. Lansbury was a Christian, but his religion wasn't just going to church. He was president of the Church Socialist League. 
This was an association of the Church of England clergy who were socialists, who believed that the church itself should stand for socialism. In 1912, Lansbury resigned his seat as Member of Parliament for Bow. The Parliamentary Labour Party had refused to add his amendment allowing votes for women to the new suffrage bill. Lansbury gave up his seat to fight a by-election on the issue and the popular Labour Party was disaffiliated for supporting him. The Women's Social and Political Union, the militant suffragettes, came down to help in the by-election led by Sylvia Pankhurst. Although Lansbury lost the by-election, Sylvia Pankhurst stayed. She not only wanted votes for women, but better conditions for working women. She took a shop in Roman Road and started the East London Federation of Suffragettes. When the war started in 1914, the Federation didn't support it, but fought to protect people from its effects. Cheap dining rooms were opened for mills at cost price. Clothing and toy factories were started on a cooperative basis as a demonstration against sweated labour. And also a nursery for children of working women. It was at this time that several local women emerged as leaders who were later to become Labour councillors. <laughs> at the end of the war, people looked forward to a better future. They believed that socialism could be brought about. If not today, then tomorrow. In 1919, the first Socialist Council was returned in Poplar. They were determined on changes. Faced with massive unemployment, the Council maintained a standard of poor relief which they knew the rates would not support. A poor borough like Poplar had a low rateable value, but the greatest burden for relief, whereas a rich borough like Westminster had few unemployed, but a much bigger rateable value. The answer was a rates equalisation fund, whereby the richer boroughs would subsidise the poorer. The council declared war on the government to make them change the law. They refused to contribute that part of the rates which went to the London County Council to pay for the police, the asylums and water board. There were meetings all over the borough to explain the struggle. The council was summoned to appear before the High Court. Thousands of people marched with them to court. They were led by the mace bearer. Not with the mace, but with an empty sardine tin on a pole. The council defied the court's ruling and refused to pay and in September 1921 they were arrested. 24 men went to Brixton with Lansbury, then 62 years old, and five women went to Holloway. The people had formed bodyguards to protect the councillors. But as Minnie Lansbury wrote in the Times, nothing short of a machine gun detachment could have got them to prison if they had not wanted to go.
Working in the dock is vastly different from the brewery. When I came out of the army, I became a shop steward at the brewery. And probably from this, I learned how to organize. As I say, from the beginning, the awareness came with being a steward. Probably enjoying it to a certain extent. And I was involved locally in the Labour Party. But then again, this is a, an area which is all Labour. There's no fight, as it were. And I think that the festivals, it was a bit of a challenge, in actual fact, whether we could do it. And we've done it. Yeah, there is seven festivals, actually. There's seven going There's on. There's eight. There's another one today. It's another one. Yeah. yeah. We can come down and call on your help any time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. The first meeting you probably feel a little bit despondent, yeah. but when you start looking at people's programmes yeah. and see what they had and what you've got to put on or compete with, do you think so? Yeah. Then, uh, then you, you probably get a bit scared. Yeah. But as time goes on, you'll find that you'll get into it and you'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy doing it. It'll be a lot of work. A lot of work. There's a lot of worry attached to it. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's all worthwhile in the end. What about? dancing in the open air on the green yeah for, for uh, us <laughs> <laughs> well it's a bit difficult dancing on the grass David you get these people coming these outsiders come in and uh, charge an X amount of money or give you an X amount of money and charge you what they like yeah, for kids were paying five pence a roll five yeah. pence down slots and all that well the idea because they aren't money mm. and they donate it to the festival well, what we're trying to do, or what I would, I'd like to do, is to run it ourselves to the five pence, run one pence. The same with catering. They tell me you, you had all the caterers there. No, 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 we've done our own catering. What I would like to see is for people like the, the fair people to be eliminated completely. That's right. Yeah. But yeah. until you get all, until you get organised, yeah. they add an attraction to your festival. And you'll find also that if this festival committee stick together, mm -hmm. it can be used as a pressure group in your area. And you can get all sorts of things done. We have, for example, I mean, we've got the park, Langdon Park is being cleared and probably re-turfed at the end of the year. I'm sure that had we not pressed the council as a festival committee, this would not have been done. I know David says we, we involve politics. We aren't trying to start up some sort of a political committee that will start taking up and fighting all and sundry. We're not having that type of thing. I was on the committee when the, they were fighting the rents yeah. and my house was used for every Tom, Dick and Harry because we didn't have a hall that we could use when we wanted to. The Tenants Association was political. They started getting political. Well, see, Tenants Associations, uh, we, never, we have had one or two and I wasn't connected with them at all. And they all failed, didn't they? I mean, you, the, you had a terrific one on Lansbury and it failed over the rent uh, strike, I believe. Uh, and I think when you start running tenants' associations, 
if you tried to run one again, you wouldn't get off the ground in Lansbury at the moment because it's got a bad name. Through Red Stripe, people were told to withhold their red and they got a bit afraid. But I think with a festival, it's going to bring them together because they're going to come and enjoy themselves. The point is, once I come round knocking at your door for your subs, then you expect me to do something for you. And people start paying their subs every week and they expect the Tenants Association to do some work. Now, the difference between a festival is that nobody comes up and knocks at your door for money. If you go in your pub and want to put two bob in a raffle, that's entirely up to you. Mm -hmm. And he says, you are 1% withholding, 99% are paying, you haven't got a case, and we lost it, just like that. And we had all those years of marching and talking. You did think at the time that there was more people supporting you than that 1%. Pop the councillors believed that they were fighting for the poor throughout the world and that they would win. Every night crowds came to hear Lansbury or the Mayor, Sam March, make speeches from the prison windows and to sing the red flag. The National Labour Party and the TUC denounced the councillors' action. There was a lot of pressure on them to compromise and pay in promise of a conference later. It was very hard in prison and the health of all of them suffered. After five weeks, they were let out of prison and welcomed home by a crowd of 15,000 people with bands and banners. The government agreed to a common poor law fund. It was a victory that made them famous. Then, in 1926, there was a general strike, which was completely solid in the East End. The pickets stopped lorries and overturned cars, and the government had to bring food from the docks in convoys with troops. The Poplar Trades Council, through the Action Committee, administered the area, and people began to feel that they could run things. But people in Poplar now remember it for one thing, police brutality. These were not local police, but police brought in from outside, who they said were half boozed. The mounted police rode into pubs and it was unsafe to be out on the streets. It was a defeat for the government because of the brutality and it was a defeat for the people because they felt let down. The government talked of revolution because they had the jitters. So they used the troops and the police, but there was no revolution. The people were not prepared. They were not ready. It was a defensive action, solidarity with the miners. It was a protest, if you like. People were not educated to take over. They were looking for leadership, and it was not available. Socialism lost a lot of credibility. It can't come about just through the unions. There has to be something whereby people can replace the government and run things themselves. Nails, yeah, there's nails on, uh, on the stage. Is that one done, John? This one? Certainly, John. We're going to do this one again. Say it again. Say it again, John.
Hey, what did I fix? He's got to extend it, Bill. No, no. Well, he's got to go to the plug ball at the bottom, as long as it meets there. No. You got any spare up now? No. Well, I'm wrapped a bit. I'm wrapped a bit, and we're taking it back, eh? There's some under the stage we can mm. improvise with. Yeah. There's some clips under the stage, Pat. Is there? Well, yeah. yeah. There's all sorts under there, right. Pat. Well, why not stick a few of them in now? Yeah. Stick them up. I'll see you in that tent again, you won't come over it tomorrow. Yeah. Right, I'll tell a piece of it. You'll go in there tomorrow though, but not tonight. What is it? Don't worry about what is it, you can't go in there tonight. I'll just to try it, put the ends in, yeah. just to try it and see. So you got the straw, straw bowls, eh, son? How many? Fifty. Fifty. I don't know where to put them, you know, in case it rains. They're already wet. Oh, it's hey, making a difference, some of them. We, we we managed to get 19 dry bundles. Yeah. But uh, they couldn't let us have all dry ones because you never no. know. You know no. They've been left at I think we might put them up. Sheet out. I think we might put them up behind the stalls in the corner and the kids won't jump on it. Yeah. Right, fair enough. Yeah. So and the, uh, the tug of war rope. Yeah. Can't get. Oh. They lent it out a week ago. Hasn't been returned yet. But yeah. I've got all the measurements mm -hmm. and uh, the rules, but whether we can get a rope. Four inches thick. We'll have to get one by Sunday. Yeah. The only other place is the East London Stadium. I tried to get down there today, you know, mm. tried to get in there. There was nobody there when I went down. Went down twice. So I'll try again. I in think the I'll try the police. Now the police have just played a game of football. Yeah. So some of them. Well, I've already tried um, Bethnal Green, Limehouse. Yeah, they haven't got one. And they haven't got a rope. They should they borrow theirs. They borrow. The one from uh, Victoria Park. Yeah. Right. right. Go and see. Johnny, you know anybody's got a tug of war rope, but apparently we've been let down for tug of war rope. So you said they might, they've probably got one over the East London Stadium. The, the only people the I know is, is Alec Jones. They used to have their own at Care House. <coughs> if not Lemon Street, they've definitely got one. Lemon Street? Lemon Street, Nick. Have they? Well, they always use us a flight to the Temia, uh, to the E1. E1? E1? Oh, yeah. well, I'll shoot up there. See if we shoot up there. Yeah. yeah, I'll shoot up there. Look, I'll tell yeah. you what, I'll yeah. on your way through if you don't mind. You know Cannon Street Road? Yeah. Well, as Street. you go down on the right hand side, there's Smith's the chemist. Next door to it, you see a street door with a bell on. If you ring it, that's where Alec Jones lives. And he used to run the care house tug of war team. So and if you say you're from the Tevia Festival, yeah. Billy Pine, yeah. ask yeah. if he's got one. My gal made up a plan. The lad afford to get to reach her bedroom window. And we just got one to fit. We higgled and giggled and laughed about to see what fun we'd done. When we next it through the window and I fell and cut me. She had a me wrong, she had a me wrong, she had a me eh. Wrong, she had a me wrong, she had a me wrong, she had a me eh. They wheeled me home in a wheelbarrow. They wheeled me home with care. They took me to me father's house, crikey, did me swear. Me mother, she come running out and said, what have you done? Yes, oh, must yes. have been a courting. And I fell and cut me. Rum, she had a me, rum, she had a me, rum, she had a me, eh? Rum, she had a me, rum, she had a me, rum, she had a me, rum, she Rum, she dabbled on me.
Friday of the shine and black, it's hard to dance with the devil on your back. I buried my body and they thought I'd gone, but I am the dance and I still go on. Dance then, wherever you may be, I am the Lord of the dance, said he. I will lead you all, wherever you may be, I will lead you all in the dance, said he. A bit. Ease up, clergy. Ease up. Oh, it just. Ease up. Take the strain. Pow! Our idea was that if groups of people wanted to organise themselves in the area, we would support them financially as far as we could, get them on their feet, and say, "There it is. You carry on." It's not a protest. The tenants got themselves into a protest, uh, into a fight, if you like, and they lost it, and their organisation fouled and wrapped up. We don't go out to protest. We go out to involve people to do things for the betterment of their community in which they live. The festival can be a springboard, and you can jump from there. <laughs>